I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We are speaking with Hope Weston. She is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Elk Grove Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So tell us what grade you teach and give us the name of your school. I teach sixth grade at Elliott Ranch Elementary School. I've been there for this is my sixth year. Okay. So sixth grade is, is kind of an interesting year because you're not only teaching them what sixth graders need to know, but you're preparing them for middle school and beyond. Correct. So let's talk about the preparation part for, for the middle school years. So yes, we're top dog, we're K-6, so they come to us feeling on top of the world, which is good. <laughs> uh, my team feels very strongly that we hold a very important job of preparing them for middle school. Uh, we share kids, we, they practice changing classes throughout the year, and that is, um, our goal is that we send kids off to middle school being ready, they come back to us and say, we were completely ready, middle school was easy because you prepared us, and that is our biggest goal. We are, we have the, the top age of our school and they need to be ready to go on and we need them to do what they need to do to get there. So what are some of the you know, social and emotional things that you have to do to prepare students for that big step? Yes, that is a big step. Um, well, uh, hormones are flying <laughs> in, mm -hmm. in that grade. Uh, so we talked a lot with them about um, what to do when they feel overwhelmed, how to communicate with each other, how to communicate with more than one teacher. Um, we spend a lot of time trading kids, and if something happens with another teacher, we say, you need to go talk to that teacher and get help from them, because they're going to leave us and have to do that with six or eight different teachers. So we feel real strongly that it's important to create students and adults that can communicate what they need, how they need to get there, what, what's going to happen if they don't. Uh, it's, it's a pretty important place to be, in elementary school anyway. So you've got the expectations of the curriculum plus the, the social and emotional expectations as well. Yeah, we, you know, there's a lot of drama, so to speak, sure. that happens with sixth graders. And ultimately what that is, is learning to communicate with other people. And so that emotional piece will help them later years in school, later years in life, when they have to communicate with people. That's what life is about. So what do you enjoy about teaching that age group? You know, I have taught second through sixth grade. Uh, I did about a month in kindergarten. <laughs> and when this job presented itself to me, I'd never taught sixth grade and I was really scared. I was very nervous. Sixth grade seems scary in the elementary school world. Uh, it took about a week and I knew it was the place I was meant to be always. Uh, I love sixth graders. They are funny. They uh, can talk to you kind of like an adult to adults. You can tell them, hey, that was really great and it means something to them. Or hey, you need to work a little harder and it means something to them. Uh, you know, things that work with little kids don't work with bigger kids. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that was my niche, but n while I'm there, it's it's an amazing place to be. Sixth graders are awesome. They are funny, they are smart, they work hard, they want to become adults. They're trying out who they are and who they're gonna be. And it's a really great place to be, to watch that happen and help that happen. Um, and as much as I loved little kids, I, I feel much more connected to the upper intermediate kids. It's an interesting to make that, and obviously they feel that connection, so they, they reciprocate. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I try. <laughs> I work hard at that. <laughs> so, so how do you get across to them your expectations? Are there, are there some special things you do to, to let them know what's expected of them as you know, these soon-to-be adults, teenagers and adults? Yeah, you know, I, at the beginning of the year, I, I push hard. I mean, my kids know I run a tight ship. I have expectations, and they're high, and 99% of the time, they meet them. I think kids really need to feel that they are working towards something. So I, I communicate with them, I talk with them, uh, I spend a lot of time, if I, I, I watch kids and I make sure that they're, they're feeling good and they're happy. You, I mean, sixth graders, it's kind of written on them. You know, they went out to recess and they come back and something happened, you know. Mm -hmm. And so just taking, it, it can take a minute where you pull a kid aside and say, Tell me what's going on, what happened? Or do we need to talk about this? And do you want to write me a letter? There's just so many ways that you can connect with kids at that age where they haven't quite clammed up yet. They're still open to talking to you and wanting to 
express who they are and work through things and get help working through things. Um, and it's just making yourself available, making your environment a place that feels good and invites learning and invites growth. Uh, and that's my biggest goal. I want kids to like school. I, they have a lot of school ahead of them. I want them to come and feel happy. And if they don't, what do they need to get to that place? Um, and that's my job. Like, I, my job is to teach reading and writing and math and all of those important things, but it's also my job to create humans that are gonna go into the world and be good people. And that takes some direction sometimes. So you're balancing the, you know, dealing with the curriculum plus dealing with all the, the social the preteen stuff mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And that's quite a challenge. And it's also helping parents with that too. Mm -hmm. uh, having parents come in with them going, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And sometimes it just is somebody to, that they need to talk to. The kids need to talk to somebody other than mom and dad. It's just being another person that the kids know care about them and are there on their side. Had you always wanted to be a teacher? You know, my whole family's in education. Oh. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, except uh -huh. for my sister. And so it's all I ever really knew. And I went to college and I tried a few things and then it got kind of down to the wire and I thought, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna do this. Uh, I was a little bit of a troublemaker in my younger days. <laughs> and I, when it came down to it, I was like, okay, make the decision. It took about one day when I was like, yep, this is where I'm supposed to be. And it, everyone around me knew that's where I was supposed to be, but I didn't quite know it yet. They just waited for you to come Just around. waiting. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when I talk to people now, I'm like, of course that's what you were going to do. And it, I, I can't imagine doing anything else. It's such a fun job. So you come from a family of educators. Mm -hmm. Was people in your family, who's the most inspirational for you as being a teacher? You know, my parents were incredible teachers. I knew it at a really young age. Uh, my mom was a primary teacher. She taught kindergarten through second grade. My dad did intermediate and then up into high school, and he was a principal for a long time. Um, they were, I mean, on the weekends they were working. Uh, at night they were working. I was watching my mom do things. When I got my job, my mom showed up with boxes of books that she'd been saving for uh -huh. years for me, new, old. Like They instilled in me a value of what it means to be a quality teacher and to work hard and to love your job. I mean, they retired, they, years and years and years, they retired from education. My grandmother taught high school English for 50 years. Like, it's, it's in my blood. Um, and I just grew up watching them and knowing that school was the most important place for them and the students that they were teaching. So then, uh, how do you talk to people who are considering being a teacher? I mean, if you're a mentor, let's say, you know, what are some of the things that you, you talk to them about to kind of encourage them to consider this? You know, that's something that I feel very strongly about. I think we uh, have people who, are, who know that the teachers are needed and good teachers are needed. I, I don't dance around that it's a really hard job. It's hard, it's a lot of pressure, there's a lot going on in education today that wasn't going on even 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But that we need those people who care about the future of California, United States, the world, you know, we, we need people who are really, you don't have to be the best at, you know, teaching writing or teaching reading, but you do have to have a love for kids and communicating with them and I it's a really great job I mean we work hard but we also are making a difference and we are providing students with opportunities to grow and learn and there's not many jobs that you can say can do that and mm -hmm. from K to 12 they all have their own little niche but together as a whole we are creating a place that sends these children out into the world and are it's important. It's a job that's really important. And you have to love it. You can't just kind of like it. Mm -hmm, right. <laughs> you do have to love it. But it is, it's an incredible job. I, I love it. So what does it mean to you to be named as a teacher of the year for your school district? Gosh, it's, it's so incredible. It's just, it, it kind of caught me by surprise. Uh, you know, I went through the steps and I did it all, but I really didn't think I was going to win. Like, I mean, I work hard and I do what I do, but so does everyone. I mean, it was sort of a... Uh, it was a surprise that caught me off guard. <laughs> I was in a training that day and they pulled me out and said, uh, we need to talk to you. And, I thought, oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> and my kids were out there and they had the balloons and, the, oh. and it was just such a, a neat thing that I think everybody should get the opportunity to witness and be part of. Uh, and so because of that, I am 
sharing it so that everybody gets a little part of it. Uh, my, my family and friends have been like so amazing. Um, they sh all showed up at my district board meeting in oh. matching shirts. Uh, it, it's just been an incredible ride. It's, I feel very blessed oh. to have gotten to do this. Well, congratulations Thank to you. you. We've Thank been you. speaking with Hope Weston, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Yoke Grove Unified School District. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you.